another video up today. I am balancing you on my tiles, my kitchen tiles in my kitchen because it's, it's a good height and the tripod's broken. I've just filmed a cleaning video and it broke. Yeah, I am a bit red there because I've been scratching. But anyway, I'm gonna jump straight into it. This video is why I don't want any more kids. Why I don't want any more kids. Well, I will do, I probably will do um, a birth video, like what happened and you know, how I gave birth and etc. But basically when Oliver was born, he had an awful, horrendous, tragic time coming into the world and it was bloody awful and it was extremely off-putting. Um, a long labour, no pain relief, I had no food in my system, I was dehydrated, I had a temperature, I was shown an infection, it was, it was awful, it was chronic, I was sick, everything, I could eat nothing down, they were putting a drip in me and I was chucking up the drip and everything, I'm just going to close that. Um, and they were trying to make me eat and I was like, I can't eat, I can't eat. Um, I remember the whole labour, I was sitting at a really funny angle on my bed and hanging off the bed while my mum and my other half was rubbing my back. But, yeah, I think I feel like I have to explain that a little bit. Um, and he was born at 6.16, 6.16 in the morning, early hours in the morning. And all he did when he was born into this world is scream, cry, everything. He didn't open his eyes, nothing, absolutely nothing. I am cooking pasta while I'm doing this. Um, yeah, he didn't... He wasn't settled at all, at all, and you know, they're pulling him around, checking if he's okay, and cleaning him up, and wrapping him up, and everything, and she screamed, 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 and my mum was like, something's not right, my mum knew straight away, she was like, something's not right, and um, I was getting stressed, I was exhausted, and I'll admit, as soon as Oliver was in the world, all I wanted to do was sleep, I was just, I was out of it, I wasn't, you know, I said my hello, and then after a while, I just, I was, I remember the, the lad that cut me and then sewing me up for about half an hour, 40 minutes he was. I was just laying there and I was like, I'm so sorry, but I've got to sleep. And all I could hear was Oliver cry and everything like that. And it was getting very stressed, but it does me in. Um, obviously, I know he's just brought into the world, he's going to cry. But everyone kept saying it was normal. My mum was like, no, something's not right here, something's not right. And then when I was holding Oliver, I noticed... Well, my mum noticed when he was like, I was sitting in the chair, because I got up, had a shower, sat in the chair, and um, he was laying on the pillow across my lap, and we noticed his whole side of his face dropped. And my mum said straight away, there's, some, there's something not right there, like, why is his face and his lips all dropped? Um, and he had a stroke, the stressful birth, he had a stroke. Um, he also... I think he lapsed, no he didn't straight away did he, no he didn't, we were both exhausted um, but yeah he had a stroke at birth which gave Oliver cerebral palsy and he now has head seizures as well and he's now just been put on medication, um, he goes to physio, he's had special shoes, he's in and out of hospital and he's, he's just turned, well no he's not just turned three but he's three and we've only just started to get answers and I have a lot of issues and problems myself, I'm not straightforward at all neither's Oliver so it's extremely stressful um I will be still in the hospital because cerebral palsy is a birth fault and our uh, Oliver should have been brought into the world through emergency c-section and he wasn't because he was showing signs signs of an infection and then I was as well as soon as Oliver was born they did a lumbar punch in his spine because they thought he had a uh, meningitis had to do that straight away luckily it come back absolutely fine we were all dreading it um but yeah and then we went upstairs to the maternity what was it the maternity ward something like that and this lady this really really lovely lady and i'd love to meet her again she was like your mum's right there's, there isn't there's something wrong with oliver i can see it myself i know i've been here a long time there's something not right so she wheeled oliver downstairs to the anal and next minute i was signing stuff for him like to have done and for medication to be put in him and everything like that and then next minute I see my son I come down and he's got tubes in his mouth his nose he's got um cannulas in his feet and his hands all sorts his eyes were covered it was naked he was in a little nappy and I was just like 
what the hell, what the actual hell, like what's going on, I was really emotional, Didn't I didn't click with Oliver, I didn't click with the bond straight away, I didn't at all and I feel like that was the hospital's fault because the way he was brought in the world, it was so stressful and I was so overwhelmed, like I didn't just get to have the baby and cuddle him for ages and then you know, breastfeed him and bond and get that feeling. I never got that with Oliver and he was just taken straight away and the next time me and Tom saw him, he was in an incubator and we were just, it was an emotional one. It was probably the upsetting and the most stressful thing that I have ever done in my life. And that is why I would never do it again. And I'm certain I will never have any more kids. It makes me emotional to think about it. Don't, Lola. Um, but yeah, a lot of people have said, I said to other people, like, I've just explained what my labour and everything was like, would you have another kid if you were me? And they were like, no, definitely not, we wouldn't. And I was like, well, there you go, that's why I don't want any more kids. So, Oliver is my last. If I could, I'd love to get sterilised and I might go and pay for it myself to be sterilised. Because I know the NHS won't do it because I'm only 23, but having another kid is not on my list or my partner's list, no. Oliver's got a lot of problems and I want to focus on Oliver and give him the attention and give him the needs and stuff that he help, uh, he needs, sorry. So another kid is completely out of the picture and it can get years down the line and I definitely would not want another kid. Like, I used to be, I used to love babies and my cousins and looking after them and I used to be like, oh, I always want a baby of my own. But a little tip, we all don't think about the bad stuff. So we don't think about the early mornings, waking up in the night, sick everywhere, pooey nappies, all that stuff, all the stressfulness, you know, constantly crying, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're emotionally drained. None of us think about that. We think about, oh, I can't wait to have my own baby, I can't wait to dress my baby in nice clothes and push my baby in the new pram and, you know, all that and that. It's nothing like that. No, that's how I looked at it. And as soon as I had a child, I was like, shit what have i done <laughs> almost because it was extremely hard um but yeah now what i've explained to you would you have any more kids if you were me no no makes me a little bit emotional my eyes have gone red but no oliver's my only child a lot of people say oh it's cruel to have just oliver on his own he's got no siblings but he can wait until my beautiful sisters pop out kids and then you know he's good to go because having another kid is not on my list at all i, I never honestly i'm 100 110 percent like so certain that i'd never have any more kids because how stressful and emotional it was i also had baby blues so bonding with oliver was extremely hard i found that really really hard um i was going through a stage as well i'm not shy to say it because there's a lot of mums out there like this and you could probably, um, what's the word, you could probably, you know there's a lot of mums out there that are the same as me and this advice might help you because you're not the only one out there that had a bad, you know, you had a bad labour or you find it hard to bond with your baby or anything like that because I'm not afraid to say that because one of my friends or my viewers that are watching could have gone through exactly the same thing and you're not on your own and baby blues, I think it's quite high the amount of mums that actually suffer with it and you don't spot it until two three four weeks down the line you know I had it I think mine was three or four weeks and until I started it's three, three or four weeks old and then you know but I just want to make sure that you know that you're not on your own and I was and because I had uh, gallstones in my gallbladder which is high cholesterol through my pregnancy that pain and that being sick and losing weight and just never happy and miserable and depressed and low and I didn't want to be here. I want people to relate and think that you're not the only person out there. I had a really bad labour and I had really bad baby blues and I was really depressed but we do eventually get over it, we get support all through my pregnancy. I couldn't have my, medi my, mental, health, my mental health medication with Annie's presents. So I was seeing a lovely lady called Na, I think, at the Health and Mind. I love the Health and Mind, they've helped me out so much. And she was absolutely lovely, that lady, and she helped me all the way through my pregnancy. I absolutely loved her. Loved her. And it was sad that I couldn't, after having Oliver, carry on with her. But she, she just made everything feel like, 
yeah, that's how it feels. Like, yeah, I understand you. And she made me feel like I wasn't the only person suffering with this and that and things like this, you know? But this is video is probably all, it, all everywhere. It sounds like it is. But yeah, and the answer is no, I would never have any more kids because my labour was horrendous and my poor little boy comes with a lot of problems and it's not easy. So I'd never do it again because he needs my full care and my full attention and he needs me, you know. And kids is not on the card. Not on the card. <clears throat> I used to be a really big kid lover and I'm like, now I'm just like, hmm, kids, ooh, dirty. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that is the reason why I wouldn't have any more. But make sure you, you know, if you did feel the same as me, you had a bad labour and you had baby blues and you didn't bond with your baby and you found it really hard, comment on the video or you can um, private message me. I would 100% talk to you and explain and what advice I got given, you know, and stuff like that. 100%. You know, nothing's easy. My pregnancy, my pregnancy was absolutely amazing. I loved it. No niggles, no pain, no nothing. No scares, it was, I loved it. My pregnancy was beautiful, most amazing thing I've ever done. But it was it was very different when it became labour and I was coming into the world. But yes, the reason I won't have any more kids. So this seems all rambled, but people wanted to know and I've now now told you. So yeah. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel if you want to see any more please comment down below and let me know what you would like to see next and I will try my best to film it for you guys. And thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in a new video. Bye guys.